Welcome back to another video. Today's episode is going to be a little different from the stuff I've recently been posting for the last couple of weeks, PvP, you know. And thus I stayed up around till 12 a.m. in the morning pondering the question, what can I do that isn't PvP, but yet still requires the same amount of nerdiness slash dedication and or obsession in order to fully accomplish? Why not make another redstone door? So for the last couple days, I've been trying to come up with a completely original design and idea for a redstone door. And I've finally come with the final touches. Alright, now, this I call the snowflake door. Or the snow door, whatever you want to call it. And you can see why here. It's blatantly obvious right here. You guys still can't see the snowflake, just focus very hard in the center. You know what? Just pretend. This is a decently fast door. It's a 3x3 three three piston door. I feel like the the snowflake part comes from the aesthetics. I mean, just look at it. But it's pretty fast. I'll show you how fast it is. It uh, You press this button. It's pretty decently fast, as you can see right then. It also closes very fast. And as well, if you go out, same speed. There you go. Now, I'm fairly certain as soon as I show the guts of this monstrosity, 25% of my audience will leave. I, it's guaranteed because they're like, oh my gosh, I, what is this mess? All right. So before further ado, I'll show you how this thing works. So here's the basic overlay of it. This is just uh, my makeshift room, I guess you can say. I didn't really want to make it a house or a room because it just blocks everything. But essentially, we have a lot of stuff here, and I'll be showing you how to go over it block by block. I'll also be showing you how to make the custom snowflake design, but in reality, you can make this for whatever you want. So without any further ado... Let's learn how to build the snowflake door. So the first part of this redstone tutorial is going to be building the snowflake itself. We'll add all the aesthetics at the end, but we got to build the basic overlay of it. And if you guys don't want to watch these, you guys have your own idea, then feel free to use any of the timestamps down below. But if you guys are following along, then what you're going to want to do here is build one, two, three, four blocks up into the sky. All right. And what you're going to do here is build a fifth block. And on that fifth block to its left, you're going to do one, two, three, four four all right and you should have a four by four over here next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to skip one block leave this blank and do the exact same thing put it on the uh going facing the opposite direction now we're going to be doing this for the top side we did the bottom side so what you're going to do here is kind of the mirrored version of this you're going to go one two break build up one kind of make kind of like a diagonal l right there you need to go up again, and just like that, you should have a little structure, and then you're just you're just gonna fill in the blanks, I guess you can say. And there you go. You should have the basics of your door done. Once you have that step completed, you're gonna want to take your blue ice. If you're following along, you're gonna break one block here and one block there, and you're just gonna place uh, blue ice right there, and then you're gonna place one right here here and then you're just going to make a diagonal shape so you're going to repeat the pattern placing uh, a temporary block right there and making just repeating the pattern until you get to the top right about here it should be good and next you're going to you're just going to copy this on the other side and break out the center now what you're going to do for the center is that you're going to take a whatever the smooth quartz block and you're just going to fill it in just like that and now we're going to do the same for the bottom side. So we're going to break one here. And that step is complete. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your quartz block. You're going to want to fill in the bottommost edge right here. Add another diagonal. Don't fill the top. Just fill the bottom and you should have something like this. But for the bottom, you're going to want to do the top just like that. Now we gotta add a. It looks a bit like snowflake, but we, you know we gotta add a little more decoration to this. So we're gonna add a stair facing towards the middle of the snowflake, and we're gonna have another stair facing outwards, the opposite direction. And we're gonna go down one and down one another. Oh, don't place that. There we go. And just like that, repeat this process on the same side. And yet the top, if you're snowflake, just about done. And then what you're going to do next is for the bottom one, which is a little trickier. But all you got to do is place one stair facing outwards. One stair facing outwards. And you go down here, place a uh, temporary block, and you're going to break it. And place the other one facing inwards. 
and there you go now you have the edges of your snowflake complete so the final last touch for this is that you're going to extend the sides by one and you're going to add those sides as stairs instead of full blocks now this is completely optional however i highly suggest that you do this because it gives you a better aesthetic i guess so you're going to add full blocks there and next you're just going to repeat this pattern up down up and down with the stairs and you should get this wonderful pattern just like such or you go down up down up it's fine it doesn't matter which way you do it i feel like down up it looks a little better there we go and then we repeat this on the other side Next, you're going to want to do is that you're going to take your stairs and you're just going to place them through the center. And this is where our door is going to be. So it's going to be a little off center, but you're going to place one stair upside down and one stair upside up. And then you're just going to place a stair right here. Pretty simple. You can follow through by placing another stair right there. That's a uh, pretty good symmet symmetry. And you're just going to fill it in. And there you go. Now the final part of this snowflake uh, general structure is going to be completely optional. You can add a stair right below this stair right here, and you can add another one right there. And you're going to do the mirrored version as well. And you, as you can see, our snowflake is starting to get a little more depth. That's just why I like it. And you can add two more on top, just facing downwards. And there you go, you have the depth of your snowflake, which I think it looks really cool. No pun intended, but... But now that we're actually done building the snowflake, you guys can finally get into building the redstone. So what you're going to do here is that you're going to break these two pieces right here. And you're just going to fill in the blank so it leaves nothing. And what you're going to do is you're going to add three repeaters going into. These will be useful later with redstone attached to them. You can place a lever down just for testing. But we're going to leave it just like that. And from here, you're going to add three redstone torches. These should all be activated. Because when they're activated, they will activate a piston to extend and what you're gonna do is that you're just gonna place three by three of glass uh pardon me not glass ice packed ice to be preferred you can use a transparent ice but that would show the pistons which is not ideal so the way this is going to work is that these pistons are going to attract the bottom layer or the bottom layer of the door which is th these three blocks and once you activate a power source they will attract because this redstone signal is turning off these redstone torches which then henceforth retracts the pistons so now we're going to work on these side pistons and for this you only need two pistons so you're going to have one piston here oh facing inwards to make sure and you're going to have another one facing the same direction now when these both extend they should retract these two middle blocks all right so what we're going to do to get these two middle blocks is that you're going to take uh, place two more quartz blocks down here and you're going to take redstone repeater one uh, zero ticks pardon me and you're gonna have a redstone dust just like that and from here you can make an observer chain one two three oh make sure they're all facing the piston the way the observers work is that if they observe something changing so let's say this block were to turn off let's say there was a block in front of this one it would send a redstone signal as you saw right there if something changes it will detect it and send a redstone signal which is what we're going to be using for both of these. So we're just going to add another one on the other side. One tick. Dust. And then we're going to have observers going up. Two, three. Oh, make sure that's facing them. And there you go. You should have your sides complete. So if we were to, let's say, retract, we should have the bottom and the middle retracted. So all of the left is do the very middle and the top. So now that we have the bottom and sides of the middle done, we have to do the top and the very center. However, I think that we should do the top first just so we get that out of the way. So what we're going to do is the same thing on the bottom except minus the torches. And we're just going to add three pistons right there, which should extend and retract. So what, how are we going to get a vertical redstone source, you may ask? Well, we're going to add three more blocks here. And then this redstone source, like I said earlier with the torches, should deactivate, since it's on, should deactivate this torch, which will, in turn, activate, let that torch activate, and deactivate this torch, and one more should activate it. And then we're going to have a redstone signal, one, two, one, two, just build vertically, and then you can have something like that, then you should add redstone, oh, actually you're going to have one here. And then build up one. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now that we have that attached, 
that piston to extend, but just add redstone all throughout, and there you go. The top piston should extend, and you have the top done. So if we go back to the lever, everything should retract. Man, that was fast. There's one problem. How do we get the middle to contract? Well, that has to be a, it has to be a little modified for this. So we're gonna do a double piston extender. And for those of you who are watching, you guys probably don't know what that is. All right, I don't blame you because it's a topic that not many people cover, or a lot of people cover, but it's just not that everybody's heard about. So you're just gonna take that ice and you know give it a little bit of depth by one. And it should be looking something like this, a little farther out. For those of you who don't know what a double piston extender is, it essentially is one piston on top of another, and then you're going to have your block of choice right here. And what we're going to need is that we're going to have to activate the bottom one, while it's also being able to activate the top one and simultaneously. So we're going to need both of them to be activated, and then activate it again, and then retracting. Just like such. So in order to build this double piston extender, you get that middle block down so we can have a functioning door. We can actually walk through it. You say you're going to have three blocks just like such. And you're going to have one piston and that's going to activate since so it's activated by this redstone torch. And what you're going to do is you're going to have another one that's not activated, but it should be just like that. What you're going to do is you're going to come around right about to there. All right. And now we don't really want this redstone source here. All right? It's not going to work. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace that. We're going to break that, which will be detected, and we're going to replace it with an observer facing the eyes or facing towards the redstone block. So when it detects when it detects us that these torches go out, it will send a redstone source for a couple seconds, very minimal, and we're going to have a repeater here just so this doesn't activate this redstone and that the redstone is going into this piston and only that piston. So now that we have this piston to be able to retract, now we're going to need a, the top piston to be able to extend. All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to take slabs, or you can use regular blocks, but we're going to use slabs. It's just, it's just cheaper, I guess, if you're on survival. You're just going to build up. You're going to build up one. And a little fun fact, if you guys didn't know, um, is that redstone can actually transfer like that. I know, I know, I know what you guys are saying. It's like crazy to think about. All right, and then you're just gonna place one more, and you're gonna have a repeater facing there on four ticks, I believe. It has it has to be three ticks? That's three ticks. Pardon. Now, if we were to test this, we were, we would see that the mill block still doesn't contract, which is perfectly normal. It's just the contract in this piston, so we know that it can contract. Now all we gotta do is to get the top piston to grab the ice block before it contracts fully. So what you're going to do for this is fairly simple. You're just going to add a block right here, kind of make it a semi X shape. And you're gonna go down one, and you're gonna go up one again, and you're just gonna add redstone dust. So you're gonna add redstone dust there, and you're gonna add another one here. All right, that should contract. It's just detecting a change. And so that's what we're gonna leave it at. But, however, we do it doesn't fully contract this. So what we're going to do is that, remember how I said that redstone sources can um, transfer through one block. So we're going to use that to our advantage here. We're going to add a ice block here. And voila, look at that. The piston extends. Woohoo. And now we can just add another layer of ice if you guys want to, just, you know, for security. You never know. And if we retract it, look at that. We have our door. But if you think your door is done, it is no is nowhere near done. All right, we need to be able to activate it with a button from the outside and from the inside. But before we do that, we got to build a makeshift room first. So what you're going to do is you're just going to extend it by one. You can add a little any floor you want, and we're just going to make a little makeshift room. You don't have to copy the room. This is up to you, really. I'm just making a makeshift so you guys can get a general idea of what we're doing here. And you're just going to fill the walls as high as you want. Three, two, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use three. And you're just going to fill the walls. And that is where our redstone is going to start. So in order to make this activate via button instead of via lever, we can adjust some settings here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to break a hole in each four. Oh, not the stair. We need the stair. But uh, we're going to break a hole in the corners here right between those stairs. And we're going to go to the back. And now everywhere you placed a hole or broke a hole, you're going to place ice right behind that.
and you should have a shape just like such. Now, we're not going to really do anything on this side, so we're going to go to the right side, and this is where a redstone is going to come in handy. So what you're going to do is that you're going to recall to the time where I said a redstone can travel through a block, and you're going to add blocks just like such, and you're going to add a block here, a redstone repeater, so that the redstone only goes in, not out. And if you see, if we activate the button, the quote-unquote hidden button here, we can see that we get a redstone signal. Anyway, so we're going to go back, and this is where our button's going to be from the inside. So we're going to add a button right there, and we're just going to have a redstone source. But that will be used for later. So what we're going to do here is that we're just going to practically just attach it. Right? Just at attach it down here. That's all you got to do. Make sure it doesn't attach it to this redstone here. Just That's just a disclaimer. Don't let it attach to that, all right? I know that's something weird. You just want to attach it there. And you can add a repeater going just like such. And you could have it on one to two ticks. It doesn't matter however slow you want it to open. If you want it to open uh, pretty fast, so you leave it on zero ticks pretty fast. But it also closes very fast. And if we activate the button from the inside, we can see it does the same thing. However, it's a little too fast. Like, if I were to walk through this, I would get crushed. And as you can see, I'm now frozen in the ice like any caveman. But uh, we need to get out of this. So what we're going to do is not do that, but we're going to extend the button's length. Because the button depends. It sends it's a redstone source, but it's not long enough. It doesn't stay activated for long enough. So we need to extend that. And how are we going to do that, you may ask? By using one of the most complex systems in the game. It's none other than comparators. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you, I lost like 30% of my audience when I said that comparators. Yeah, you guys don't like them. But yeah, we're going to be using these. So the way we're going to use comparators is fairly simple. We're just going to add two blocks right here, extended by two. And we're going to have two blocks going in. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add a comparator, both facing opposite directions. So you should add like this. And we're going to add redstone dust just like that. And that should extend the button's source by a significant amount. As you can see, that lasted quite a bit of time there. And what we're going to do is that now we're going to connect that to the other blocks that we see here. So this redstone will attach to that and will essentially attach all the way down there. It basically gives you enough time to walk through. However, if you want to slow this process down, the opening and closing, you can essentially use, you can put on two tick delay or one tick, pardon me. And if you open the door from the outside, you can walk through and it'll shut directly behind you. And if you open it from the inside, you can walk through and that is how you build the snowflake door, a custom door made by Snowstrom. So if you guys enjoyed this redstone tutorial and want to see more like it, then feel free to hit that like and subscribe button as they will help me out a ton. And my goal is to hit 5k subscribers by the end of this year. I know we can do it. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it's both even like down there. And without further ado, we'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Comment down below if you guys need help. And I will try to help you in the comments the best I can. And bye-bye.